Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. We are back working on the Sweetheart Roadster. I've been waiting on a little bit of parts slash me forgetting because I've been running around all over the place traveling and stuff. So uh, last time we worked on this, you saw that uh, Justin and I made the uh, inner door structure for this thing and I got it all bolted on and basically hinging and that's where I stopped that because I needed some better door hardware. The original door latches are set up basically to use exterior door handles and I actually want to shave those, to shave the outside holes or fill them on this car. So um, between that and also the, uh, the door handles or door latches being extremely sloppy from almost 100 years of use, um, I decided to opt for getting some reproduction or new door latches. So uh, when I was building the Free T, I used the original uh, like 1919 Model T door hinges on the car and um, I actually really liked how simple they worked and actually how securely they latched considering how old they were. So I decided to actually order a set of reproduction uh, latches for a Model T for like a runabout or roadster uh, from that era. Uh, I specifically picked uh, this style here which was like on the T. And the cool thing about that is they have this little like uh, door handle section that's on the inside that could be polished or chromed or painted. Um, you could also heat and bend it to modify it to make it look how you want. And real simple design, it's actually a little smaller and more compact than the Model A one. So I wanted to use this uh, on this car just to simplify things. The other really great thing with Ford is, is that they kind of reused a lot of stuff and, and, and dimensions over the years so the door catch from a Model T is basically the same size as all the way up to like 34 Ford I think so I ended up getting some stainless um, catches that I'm going to use on this as well uh, because the old ones were extremely worn out and rounded and chipped and everything like that so I figured we'll start with something fresh so that these doors on the Roadster latch and stay shut which is a huge feat for a Model A Roadster. So I'm gonna work on getting this all mounted up. We're gonna cut some holes in our nice inner structure and hopefully get this thing latching by the end of, end of this video. So the way I do this, and I did this on the T, was I mount up the catch, which is kind of our set location. It's like stock. And then what I do is I take the door latch and I fit it on here. Now it's because of the spring, it pushes in a little bit, but it'll sit like that. Then we could swing the door shut and see where the latch actually needs to land. So I can swing this around here and I'll take you guys off the, off the stand here. But you can see with the door shutting, it pretty much lines up really nice where I should be able to um, just drill some holes and have this latch just kind of swing swing or a slide over top of the sheet metal I'm hoping and sandwich over top of it and we can just slide it uh, and swing it shut and get it to latch. So that's looking pretty good. That means that I kind of all my measurements for my gaps and stuff worked out pretty good. It looked like a really big gap when I was first making this door and I was a little worried that this was like obnoxious but then I kind of took some measurements off other cars, uh, other roadsters and saw that it was about right and you can see I pretty much nailed it sort of so uh, I'm going to try and get this latch I'm going to make some measurements here and marks and then I'm going to try and drill some holes and actually just through bolt this into the inner structure and see if we can get this to latch here real quick All right, so we got our hole cut here. 
Let's see, it pretty much lands right where we want. I need to trim or sand a little more out of there. And then also it's hitting somewhere. Oh, right in here on the catch. So we gotta just open this up just a little bit more right here to sink it in, but pretty much landing where we want it to land. It's just need to open it up a little bit more. So we'll take the marker. This whole top edge could be opened up a little bit. So now that I got those two uh, screws mounted here in the door latch and we actually got it to latch and it works pretty well. Uh, but one thing I was a little afraid of when we started like test fitting this before we hit the, actually cut all our holes and everything is that the door latch, um, well I shouldn't say the latch, the catch is just a hair too big or sharp and you have to really yank on the door handle to get it to, to open. So, like, I'm like all the way back and almost flexing it to get it to sneak by, which might be okay, but I think it's a little much and it's gonna cause a problem when you have somebody in the car, you know, if, if you're trying to open it and you have to force on it, it's not good, you're gonna end up tweaking on the door and it just really isn't a good thing. So, uh, it looks like I just have to kiss the uh, latch catch uh, the catch section on the door post just a little bit with a grinder just to take just the sharpness of the face down just a hair because if I push and really yank on it, it opens. Um, but I'm not particularly happy about that. Um, there's plenty of engagement on this. So if I take you off the, off of here, you guys can see that we have like this whole area here that the latch is, is going all the way behind. So that latch is fully engaging behind there. So it's not a problem, but I just need to take a little sharpness off the, what's the inside of it. Just, just knock it in going this way, just a little bit with a sander. And that should get it just so you don't have to yank it quite as hard and will make a better experience when the car's done. These are some, some mistakes I've made over the years and, and made me annoyed when you, you know, for the first like couple years driving the car, you have to like push real hard on the door. So we're gonna just kiss that a little bit with the sander and then we can move on to drilling the extra holes that will get this bolted and uh, a little more secure in the inner door structure. the rest with a file.
pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we don't want to go too far here or we're going to actually, you know, when it wears in, it'll be really sloppy. But you can see everything's tight. You know, there's very little slop in the actual door itself, which is what we're looking for. So there we go. Cool. Now we can drill these three holes or four holes through and uh, bolt this ladder to the skin. Alright, after some thinking on this thing, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to reinforce this area here with the door latches. I don't want to just leave uh, just the single gauge metal here uh, where the door latch is because you're, with you slant, not necessarily slamming the door, but opening and shutting it and the vibration, we want a little bit more uh, strength right in this area. So I was going to make a piece of box tubing that went all the way up into here, but I realized right in here, even if I notched to kind of fit against, it would have ran into the hardware on this this side right here where this corner is too tight couldn't fit any box tubing so what i've decided to do is i made this little pattern out of chipboard here uh, i like using this chipboard it's like eighth inch chipboard that works much like sheet metal wood uh, so you could put it in the break so i actually cut this out drew lines put it on the break and uh, broke it so that it fits uh, over top of our latch here and um, what that'll do is actually let us um, Kind of have a you know a template here that I can make it out of metal. I'm going to move it over just a hair. I have my little note here that I want to move it over three sixteenths. I, I missed on my holes here, which is good with making a pattern. You can you know better than making that error on the metal. So I can make this piece and uh, put this in here, and, uh, and then we can basically spot weld it in place, and then that'll give us the strength we need, um, and uh, we can kind of go from there. So I'm going to cut this out of some metal and uh, get this all bent up.
right, so after a bunch of filing and some sanding and, and trimming uh, to get this thing to sit a little better, uh, we should be able to mount it up now. Get some random screws I got laying around the shop. Alright, so as you guys can see, I got the brace piece all uh, bolted up and it is looking pretty good. Now, I do need to spend a little bit of time actually filing the back side of the handle for the latch because it is hanging up a little bit, but that's, that's that stuff that uh, anybody that's built an old car knows that you have to do that can take hours of filing or sanding to get everything to fit exactly how you want. And I'll do that off camera on the in between the next video. But um, I ended up making this piece out of 16 gauge. I know we get a lot of questions about what material thickness I use when I work on things. So uh, this was made out of 16 gauge. And by doubling this up and making this little uh, flange section, it is going to make this significantly stronger in the latch area. And we shouldn't have any issues with the latch like ripping out or having any problems. My old doors, that was basically, and a lot of Model A Roadster doors I've seen, that wasn't really made like thicker in there. And what happens is a lot of times the door uh, latches ended up ripping out of the door's inner structure. And then you see things that are like the latches are welded in like my doors uh, that came on this car and it can become a mess. So with this, I don't think we'll have any issues and really this car probably won't ever be like an abused daily driver um, like this car might have been at some point in its life. Uh, so it should be just fine. So now that I have the door all set up and, and the door actually latches now, which is really nice like that we are uh, we're moving along so what I need to do next the next couple things is I need to make get some more box tubing to make just a little u-shaped piece here to give the door uh, some more strength and I'm actually gonna put like a bar across the the center here that can act as a as a crash bar not that you really uh, are super safe in these old cars but it'll give it some strength and also a little bit of peace of mind so I need to do a little u-shaped piece here uh, or L-shaped piece to connect the U, and then a crossbar in there. I also have uh, already scribed along this back edge here where we're gonna be folding that flange over the body here. So Model A's, uh, the door actually overlaps in the back there. So this flange is going to actually fold and lay over top of the body here. So I already scribed that in another shot. And once I get some more help, I can actually put this in the bead roller. We can tip that edge and get that rolled over. And uh, kind of that will give me a location for where we're gonna put the box tubing here but uh, just like I always say small victories that's what this is I got the inner door structure latching and we got this brace kind of made up I'm gonna keep my pattern that I made for this little brace so when we go to do the other door it's gonna be way quicker because I'm gonna have all these patterns already drawn up and measurements and everything like that and uh, it'll make it a little bit quicker so this door is the first door or first part is always the slowest because you're kind of figuring it out as you go and the next one hopefully you'll have uh, a little bit of things you figured out along the way so that's all I have for this one I'm happy to be back working on the sweetheart roadster it feels really good to get back on this car uh, especially such a long-term project like this so thank you guys for watching let me know what you think of the uh, inner door structure now that it's latching thanks guys catch you later